and there you've got the palm ash decimus burton's palm ash in the background so here we are looking at taxodium distichium on the edge of the lake just by the palm ash what a cracking specimen that is this is clearodendron trichotomum a beautiful clearodendron this is one you can propagate by root cuttings and uh, you can see there's incredible fruits there where you've got that that sort of calyx uh, sort of cerisi calyx and then you've got that darker color uh, fruit in the middle from the pericarp a nice specimen zagunna romanicata you can just see the spores just beginning to form on them look at that there they are cracking plant it's like poor man's umbrella some culture come uh, Autumnale, or Cedrus Atlantica Glauca, and let's give this a little tap, we can't resist it. See the pollen kicking off there, that's incredible, the male pollen, and uh, just one of a number of fantastic trees at Kew. But let's just look over across here, look at that beautiful Acer rubrum. It looked like a Procia persica when I first saw it, but it's Acer rubrum, it's not got the peeling bark, and you've got three points on the leaf there. What a cracking autumn coloured plant that is. We're going to go into the beautiful Princess of Wales house uh, with all the different environments. So this is uh, one of the Pierce de la Resistances of Q. Let's go and have a look inside and see what's in here. Here we got our punches, we've got ferrocactus, we've got desilarian, and there's all sorts of sarius and a nice little backdrop as well painted. Uh, in this um, sort of uh, hot, dry area in the Princess of Wales house. Just having a little look at the lethops, a living yes, stone plant, great plant. Achipodium, the large foot kind of cacti on there. Nice yucca. There's Aeoniums looking across. There's you can see Echiums. Uh, just an incredible range as you look through here. This is Lavendula canariensis. You can see the similarities here in the flower, and you've got a fragrance on it, and you've even got obviously the square stem if you feel that. We're now into one of the tropical houses. Well, we've got Kirkilago, we've got Anthuriums, uh, you can see there's Philodendrons. Uh, gosh, there's a, just such an incredible range of palms as well in this house. Really nice. Eachmia fasciata here growing on the ground. These are Fetonias looking at them. Philodendron giganticum. What about that for a water feature? You could have that dropping in through that into another one. Medinella here, and look at this the inflorescence, this little verticillaster, comes from the center of the whirl of leaves. Incredible plant. And then this one is really mind blowing. Incredible plant this is, it just sort of coils round and whether it's following the sun, uh, it, it isn't touching anything, so it's not a figmatropism, but it's just as if it's trying to maximise the sunlight by spiralling round like a, a strand of DNA so every bit of leaf gets a bit of sunlight. Incredible. Iconic Amorphophallus titanum. What a plant this is and if you look at the when it flowers, unfortunately, it's not flowering at the moment, but this one smells like rotten carrion, and the flies come in thinking they're gonna get a, uh, some lunch, and they rattle around in the flower and they end up pollinating it. So, uh, incredible uh, plant, this. Uh, and the spadix, that pointy bit, can, can heat up to 36 degrees Celsius, so it's gonna be a real stench in there when it's flowering. Plant, look at this amazing, these inflorescence is coming down this is a pepper or piper a great plant and then if you go in close you can see where they have put some aspleniums and they wired them on like an epiphyte onto the branches
entering into the orchid house, tropical orchids, so So an incredible range of orchids, uh, guarianth. Uh, we've got um, just amazing the way the attention to detail. Just look at the, the, the plants up there. Obviously, you've got the Talanzia, Spanish moss. You've got all sorts of epiphytes put into there. These uh, dendrobiums. And then looking up here, you've got some incredible kind of orchids flowering. Just look at this beautiful kind of, it's not even a raceme, it's like a, like a spike directly off the, uh, uh, you know, hanging down. Caline pulverula. For Miltonias, look at them just uh, mimicking some kind of insect to come and pollinate it ferns now and we've got the Dixonias the New Zealanders are here fabulous plants and oh look here there's some lovely Solaginella this is one uh, very historic kind of plant um, and again a good range of orchids <laughs> these are the maiden air fern types really the Ediantums incredible Kim's related to uh, ginger, fantastic plant. Good in the autumn. Usual theoboma, this is a chocolate nut tree, and you can see the the, the, the flowers and fruit coming off the stem and as you go down here you can see there's the fruit of it the chocolate nut tree really interesting fruit on that very much like the coffee arabica coffee tree the victoria amazonica the victoria water lily and it was joseph paxton up at chatsworth who first got this to flower and he took it down on the train to see queen victoria and presented it to her and this was named after Queen Victoria, the Victoria Amazonica, uh, beautiful water lily and uh, you see pictures of, of, of young children, babies on, on of these, really interesting. The uh, sacred lotus Nilumbo, uh, really revered uh, this one. And uh, as we go down, you've got the Egyptian kind of water lilies, and Nymphicarial are beautiful. Interesting old-fashioned techniques for uh, dealing with decay. Nice bit of brickwork and prop, but uh, not so much recommended today. But, however, in this particular instance, if you look at it, the tree is actually doing okay. Um, 